Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Bertrago Pinzon, RTRVI. Welcome back to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering the humerus. But before we start, don't forget to press that like button and subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin! The Anatomical Position This is when the patient stands erect with the face and eyes facing forward, arms are extended, hands are facing forward, heels are together, and the toes are pointed forward also known as the neutral position, do not forget it. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. Before we jump into the positioning, let's review the anatomy of the humerus. The humerus is the long bone that makes up the framework of the arm. This long bone is between two types of joints. As you can see here on the right hand side, the distal end of the humerus forms a hinge joint with the forearm also known as the elbow, while the proximal end of the humerus forms the ball and socket joint with the glenoid cavity of the scapula, also known as the shoulder. The distal humerus. The distal humerus has a number of important landmarks that you must be familiar with. The epicondyles, both lateral and medial, that protrude from the humeral condyles, as you can see here on the right hand side. Next is the trochlea, which is the landmark that articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulnar bone on the medial side. Medial to the trochlea is the ulnar sulcus. This is where the ulnar nerve passes through, as you can see here on the right hand side. Next is the capitulum, which is a landmark that articulates with the radial head on the lateral side. Continuing the distal humerus, in the anterior surface, superior to the trochlea, there is a depression known as the coronoid fossa. This is where the coronoid process from the ulna articulates with the humerus when the elbow is flexed. Lateral to the coronoid fossa, there is another depression known as the radial fossa. This is where the radial head articulates with the humerus when the arm is flexed and the radius rotates when the hand pronates and supernates. Medial to, on the posterior side, superior to the trochlea, there is another depression known as the olecranon fossa. This is where the olecranon process of the ulnar bone articulates with the arm when it is fully extended, unless you're double jointed. Lastly, the body of the humerus. This is the long cylindrical part of the humerus that makes up the majority of the bone. Now we'll continue with the proximal humerus. The humeral head. This is where the humerus articulates with the glenoid fossa, forming the ball and socket joint with the shoulder. This is the most superior or proximal part of the humerus. This to the humeral head is the anatomical neck of the humerus. Next, moving laterally, we are able to visualize the greater tubercle of the humerus. Moving anterior, we are able to visualize the lesser tubercle. This landmark protrudes anterior distal from the anatomical neck. Below or distal to the tubercles, we are able to visualize the surgical neck. Lastly, the body of the humerus, as you can see here on the right hand side, this makes up the majority of the long bone. It is very important not to confuse both of the humeral necks and the tubercles. Note the difference between the anatomical and the surgical necks and the greater and the lesser tubercles. Please make sure that you review and be knowledgeable with anatomy, because knowing your anatomy is very important for the positioning part. The AP projection. Position of the patient is upright, as you can see here on the right hand side. Position of the part. Abducted arm and the posterior surface of the arm is against the IR. Hand is supinated until the epicondyles of the humerus are parallel with the IR. It is very important that you check the epicondyles to prevent any type of rotation, as you can see here on the right hand side. Centroids perpendicular to the mid-body of the humerus. Make sure to collimate the entire humerus from the proximal radius and ulna to the lateral aspect of the scapula. SID is 40 inches. And remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is a left humerus. What is a projection? This is an AP projection. What is the position? Hand is supinated with lateral rotation. Remember to check your epicondyles, do not forget. Now let's practice your anatomy. The radius, which is always on the lateral side. The ulna, medial side. The medial epicondyle. The capitulum, which is always on top of the radial head. The trochlea, always on top of the trochlear notch. The ulnar sulcus. The humeral body. The greater tubercle. The humeral head. The anatomical neck and the surgical neck. The lateral projection, lateral medial and medial lateral upright. Position of the patient, upright. As you can see here on the right hand side, the arm is abducted 
with the medial surface against the IR, and is medially rotated until the humeral epicondyles are perpendicular with the IR, as you can see here on the right hand side. Now if a patient is unable to medially rotate the hand due to a broken humerus, the lateral side can be placed against the IR and the arm can be imaged from a medial lateral projection, as you can see here on the right hand side. Make sure to check your epicondyles to prevent any type of rotation. Since your is perpendicular to the mid body of the humerus. As you can see here on the right hand side, this is a lateral medial projection, while this is a medial lateral projection. Do you see the difference between them? Make sure to collimate the entire humerus, including the proximal radius and ulna, and the lateral aspect of the scapula. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. This is a lateral medial projection, while this is a medial lateral projection. Do you see the difference between both of the images? Let's look at the scapulas. One's AP and while the other one is lateral. By looking at the scapula, you're able to differentiate which one is a lateral medial projection and which one is a medial lateral projection. So make sure you understand the anatomy. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is the left humerus. What is the projection? This is a medial lateral projection. What is the position? Abducted arm with medial rotation. Remember to check your epicondyles. Now let's practice your anatomy. The radius, ulna, the epicondyles that are superimposed or perpendicular to the IR, the radial head, neck, and tuberosity, the lecronon process, the humeral body, the lesser tubercle, the humeral head, and the surgical neck. Please make sure that you review and be knowledgeable with these positions. The next section is going to be special projections and methods. The AP projection for trauma. Position of the patient is recumbent, as you can see here on the right hand side. Position of the part. Make sure to abduct the arm and the posterior surface of the arm is against the IR. The hand is supinated until the humeral epicondyles are parallel with the IR. So remember, check your epicondyles to prevent any type of rotation. Central is perpendicular to the mid-body of the humerus. And make sure to collimate the entire humerus from the proximal radius and ulna to the lateral aspect of the scapula. SID is 40 inches and remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is a left humerus. What is the projection? This is an AP projection. What is the position? Hand is supine with lateral rotation. Remember to check your epicondyles to prevent any type of rotation. Now let's practice your anatomy again. Radius, which is always on the lateral side. The ulna, which is on the medial side. The medial epicondyle the capitulum, which is always on top of the radial head, the trochlea, which is always on top of the trochlear notch, the ulnar sulcus, the humeral body, the greater tubercle, the humeral head, the anatomical neck, and finally the surgical neck. The AP projection of the humerus should look exactly the same as if you are in upright position. This is just for a trauma situation, you have to adapt to the patient condition. So for a normal patient, you'll be able to do this projection upright. But in situations, for example, a trauma situation, or a patient is unable to stand, you're able to adapt and do it supine. As long as you know your anatomy, you're able to adapt to the patient condition. The lateral projection, lateral meter recumbent. Position of the patient, recumbent. As you can see here on the right hand side, the arm is abducted and the medial surface of the arm is against the IR. The hand is immediately rotated until the humeral epicondyles are perpendicular with the IR. Remember to check the epicondyles to prevent any type of rotation. Central is perpendicular to the mid-body of the humerus. And make sure to collimate the entire humerus, including the proximal radius and ulna, and the lateral aspect of the scapula, as you can see here on the right-hand side. SID is 40 inches. And remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is a right humerus. What is the projection? This is a lateral medial projection. What is the position? Abducted arm with medial rotation. Remember to check your epicondyles to prevent any type of rotation. Now let's practice your anatomy again. The radius, ulna, the epicondyles that are superimposed, the radial head, neck, and tuberosity, the olecranon process, the humeral body, the lesser tubercle, the humeral head, 
and finally the surgical neck. Lateral projection for the distal humerus this time. Lateral meter recumbent and lateral recumbent. Position of the patient, recumbent or laying down. Position of the part, place the IR between the medial surface of the arm and the chest. As you can see here, we're capturing an image from the axillary to the distal humerus. Hand is medially rotated until the humeral epicondyles are perpendicular to the IR. Remember to check your epicondyles to prevent any type of rotation. Or if the person supine, you're able to capture the distal humerus as you can see here on the right hand side. This position is called the lateral meter recumbent while this is a lateral recumbent, which is a horizontal beam capturing the lateral humerus. For the lateral recumbent, it's important to support the arm using any type of pillows or blankets to support the arm and make sure your board is all the way up to the axillary part of the arm in order to visualize the most amount of the distal humerus. Center is perpendicular to the mid body of the humerus, as you can see here on the right hand side. Collimate the entire distal humerus and the proximal radius and ulna. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is the right distal humerus. What is the projection? This is a lateral meter projection. What is the position? Lateral arm, or as is. Remember, this is for trauma situations. As long as the board is in all the way up to the axillary, you're able to capture as much of the distal humerus as possible. If the patient's able to rotate the arm in order to get a perfect lateral, try to achieve this. But if there's any type of contraindications, for example, open fractures or visible rotation or any type of contraindications, take an as-is picture. Now let's practice your anatomy. Radius, ulna, the epicondyles are superimposed, the radial head, neck, and tuberosity, the electronon process, and the distal part of the humeral body. Next is the transthoracic lateral projection, recumbent. This is for the trauma proximal humerus, the Lorenz method. Position of the patient. It can either be upright or recumbent. If the patient is able to stand, place the affected arm against the IR and raise the contralateral arm over the head. If the patient is unable to stand, the IR is placed on the affected arm and the contralateral arm is placed over the head as you can see here on the right hand side. For this projection, no rotation or movement of the injured arm is necessary. Central ray is perpendicular to the mid-coronal plane at the level of the surgical neck. If the patient cannot elevate the affected arm, a 10 to 15 degree cephalic angle can be used. As you can see here on the right hand side, the non-affected arm is raised over the head while the injured arm is left as is. As you can see here, I marked the level of the surgical neck of the affected arm. This is where the central ray is going to be aligned with the arm. Now we're looking at it from a lateral perspective. We're at the level of the surgical neck and the central ray is perpendicular to the mid axillary and the surgical neck planes. This is the centering for the Lorenz method. Make sure to collimate the entire proximal humerus to the mid humeral body, as you can see here on the right hand side. SID is 40 inches and remember to label correctly. For this projection, you're going to be using a breathing technique in order to capture the proximal part of the humerus with little to no superimposition of the ribs. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is a left proximal humerus. What is the projection? This is a transthoracic projection or the Lorenz method. What is the position? Affected arm is as is and a contralateral arm is abducted. Now let's practice your anatomy. Humeral body, the lesser tubercle, the greater tubercle, the humeral head, the anatomical neck, and lastly the surgical neck. As you can see here, I use a breathing technique in order to blur out the ribs as much as possible in order to visualize the proximal humerus as much as I could. The distal humerus, PA axial projection, position of the patient, seated. This position is only used to visualize the distal structures of the humerus, mostly the ulnar sulcus, especially for the radiohumeral brucitis, also known as tennis elbow. Position of the part. Arm is low enough on a surface, so the posterior surface of the forearm is parallel with the IR. The elbow is flexed at a 75 degree angle 
make sure to supinate the hand and lean the patient laterally to prevent any type of rotation. Remember to check your epicondyles. They have to be parallel with the IR. Central ray is perpendicular to the ulnar sulcus or medial to the olecranon process, as you can see here on the right hand side. Make sure to collimate the entire distal humerus and the proximal radius and ulna. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Now let's practice your anatomy. The radius, including the radial head and the radial neck. Next is the humeral body, the medial epicondyle, the ulnar sulcus, this is where the ulnar nerve passes through, the trochlea, the lateral epicondyle, the capitulum, the olecranon process, and finally the olecranon fossa. Lastly, the olecranon process, PA axial projections. Position of the patient seated. This position is only used to visualize the distal structures of the humerus and the olecranon process free from superimposition. Here's another view of the distal humerus and the olecranon process, which we're going to be discussing in detail. Position of the part. Arm is low enough so the posterior surface of the forearm is parallel with the IR. This time the elbow is flexed at a 45 to 50 degree angle. Make sure to supinate the arm and lean the patient laterally to prevent any type of rotation. Remember to check your epicondyles. They must be parallel with the IR. For this projection, there's going to be two central ray projections, perpendicular to the lecronon process, and also a 20 degree towards the wrist to free the superimposition of the lecronon process, as you can see here on the right hand side. Make sure you collimate the entire distal humerus and the proximal radius and ulna. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Now let's look at the difference between the projections. This is a perpendicular central ray. Well, this is the 20 degrees cephalic central ray. Do you see the difference? For the perpendicular beam, we're able to visualize more of the structures of the distal humerus. While the 20 degrees cephalic angle, we reduce the amount of superimposition of the olecranon process and we're able to visualize this landmark entirely. I know this looks like a lot, but remember, you got this. Practice with your friends and family and your fellow classmates so you can improve your positioning skills. Also, try to work on your communication skills. Remember, for some patients, it's very hard to position if you are unable to communicate with them correctly. Remember, practice makes perfect. Practice, practice, practice. Review your anatomy, and remember to take lots of notes. This concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, and share, and subscribe to the channel. And share with your friends so we can all learn together. And also follow me on Instagram at lazybones underscore radiology. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day.